Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I'm going to be playing through a brand new game I just got in, which is Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs. This is a brand new one from Cyphal Fair Games. It is a single player game that takes roughly 20 minutes per mission. And there's going to be a full campaign of missions or a deck of cards that will take you through a campaign where there's going to be a number of different missions included in it. So in this one, for those of you that have played Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, there's going to be some similarities. Now, of course, with this, it is a single player game and it is streamlined to take up a small amount of space as it, is, it, it, it stays within its theme. But it also is going to have some of those similarities. So you're going to be working with cards that will you'll be playing one card for its top effect and one card for its bottom effect. And some of the other things will be look will look very similar. But again, they're going to be streamlined for this experience. So in this video, I'll take you through the first mission, showing you how it plays and explaining some of the things. Now, this isn't a full teaching video. I am considering doing one, so let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you would be interested in seeing. And as always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow, build and produce this content. If you want to get notified anytime I drop new videos, as I'm constantly dropping new playthroughs, teaching videos, unboxings, crowdfunding videos, and many others, hit that notification bell and that'll let you know whenever I drop new stuff. Also consider hitting that share button, sharing it with your friends, getting the video out there. It helps with the algorithm and really helps the videos overall and lets me know that you want to see more of this stuff. And if you'd like to see more of this campaign, also drop those in the comments section below. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. So before getting into the game, I do want to go over a couple of things just so you understand what's going on. So first off, you are going to choose a character and there are going to be, I think, six different characters included in the game. Each one is going to have their own card that is going to list their different stats on it, as well as on the back of the card is going to list their complexity, a little bit of backstory about them and their different cards that they're going to start out with, with level one cards. And then the level two cards will be the cards that they can potentially upgrade their different cards to throughout the, the game. Other than that, on your card, you're going to have your starting health based on the level that you're starting with. So with me, I am level one. So I've set my health gauge to level one. And then I've also gathered up my four cards. Now, each of these cards, again, just like in Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, has a top and bottom with an initiative in the middle. And then each one of them will have an action listed on it or multiple actions that the player will carry out. That you can all, and then you can always choose instead to do the basics on the card, which on the top of the card is a two point attack, and on the bottom of the card is a moving up to two spaces. These cards are double sided, so with one side it's going to list side A, and on the second side is side B. And you're going to be playing these cards, and as you play them, when you get them back to your hand, if they're side A, they'll be flipped over to side B. And if they're side B, then they're going to go into the discard pile and you'll have to refresh or rest to be able to gain these back. And then you'll lose one of those cards. And if you ever can't, don't have two cards in your hand or two cards between your hand and discard, then you're going to lose the mission as you don't have enough actions to carry out another turn. So from there, then you're going to have the scenario deck and that's going to outline the different mission or whatnot you're going on. You'll have your enemy dashboards and their bonuses and negatives based on their the fate roll that they have. And there's going to be three different symbols for that, negatives, neutral, and pluses. And depending upon where you are within that, and each time they perform an attack and you perform an attack, you're going to move your cube down, which is going to activate a different section, which will be your different modifier for the turn as you roll your dice or your die. So from there, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll go through some more of it as I cover different things. So to begin with, I have the first card in the scenario deck is the sh uh, Shrinking Feeling. What a time for Gloomhaven. First, a black tornado from the void nearly destroyed the city, and then there were reports that the very essence of corruption trying to end everything. But all's well that ends well. And at the center of both events, a hail and a mysterious Aesthere who lives in a derelict tavern, the Crooked Bone. It is said that she can turn anyone into a hero, exactly what you want to be. Sure, you don't have a lot of training, but put in the in front of the right adventure, you'll get the acclaim that is due you. So, with that bold purpose, you step across the threshold of the crooked bone. And no, that's not right. Everything is growing. Why is the doorway so large? Why are you so small? Is this some sort of esther enchantment? You've been shrunk. Play scenario one, the rude welcome. 
So from there, then I'll get into scenario one. And scenario one is the root welcome. And this one lists that it is level one. And I'll go into detail about what the top and bottom of the card represent a little bit later once we get to that point. So from there, getting into, again, I have a little bit of story to read here. So someone says, got some fancy gear there. You whirl around, taking in your familiar yet unfamiliar surroundings. Your attention settles on a scruffy character behind you. Lucky on par with your diminutive structure, nice and shiny, like it's never been used. Hand it all over, and I'll get let you live. Well, that simply won't do. Your gear is unused, but there's really only one solution to that. All right, so from there, I'm going to get into a battle. So I have monsters listed in here is the Bandit Guard. So I have the Bandit Guard card here. It's going to slide into my slot there. And I'm also going to place a white marker on the top slot on my modifier. And then I'm also going to place one in this spot so that it, when I roll to determine what action, what initiative they roll and, and what they're doing during their turn, that's going to adjust as well. All right. So from there, then the rest will be read if I can complete this mission. And I'm going to flip this over and this is going to give me my first layout. So with that, I'm going to have two enemies in here. I have the blue bandits and the green bandits. And each one of them on the bandits, it's going to list how many health they start with. So each one of them is going to have eight health. And they also have one defense. And then depending upon where they fall, they may actually end up picking up an extra. My character is going to start here. Now on these cards, you're going to have all kinds of different things. You're going to have different obstacles that are going to block your path. So no enemy or friend can move into those spaces. So any of these green spaces you cannot move into. And then you're also going to have the orange spaces. These are different hazards or traps or different effects that you're going to have to resolve if you get moved into that space. So either an enemy or you that moves into that space is going to take one damage in these examples. And it, there's a little icon on there that represents that as well. All right. So from there, then it is going to move into the rounds. And each round is going to consist of both your turn and the enemy's turns. And again, that's going to be based on what they roll and what you play. So first off, let's go ahead and start by choosing two cards that I want to play. So first, I need to get adjacent to an enemy. So I have to figure out how I want to do that and where I want to move. And let's see here. So I think I'll play the leaping cleave for the bottom action so that I can move. And I'm going to go ahead and play shield bash for the top action. All right. So from there, I have to choose which initiative I want to go on. I think I want to activate first, so I'm going to choose the 15. From there, then you're going to roll the enemy die, and it's a plus, so the enemy's initiative is 70, so it's going to go in that initiative order. That allows it's the both of the bandits are going to move up to two spaces and an attack for up to two damage. All right, so from there, since it is I won the initiative, I have a higher initiative, I get to go, and I can resolve those actions in any order that I want to. Again, I can choose the different actions, so I just chose my card, so I could have, if for whatever reason, I could switch and perform the bottom action here and the top action there. But I'm gonna go ahead and carry it out in the order that I selected. And so I'm going to move up to three spaces and that allows me to jump, so I could jump over obstacles and whatnot. But I'm simply going to just move and this allows me to move from my space to an orthogonally or a uh, adjacent space that is in one of the hexes that is touching my space with a flat edge, except for spaces that are, have the green where I can't move into them. So I'm going to move down one, over one, and over one for a total of mo a three movement as that's what's listed on the card. Now if I had any other movement and I didn't want to spin it, I can choose not to and then that's simply lost. All right, so then that card has been resolved. And then I'm going to go to the shield bash. So this one is going to allow me to perform an attack action. So I'm going to go ahead and attack green. And I'm going to roll the die to determine any bonus or penalty to that. So rolling is a plus, which I consult my chart on a plus. It adds plus one to that. So I'm going to do four damage to the guard. The guard does have the one static defense. So it is going to take three damage and bring its health down to five. 
All right, so from there, then both of these cards are going to be flipped over. Well, this one does my shield. I do have the option to keep it in the active area. Let me slide that up a little bit. And then it's going to give me a plus one uh, defense. So I think I will keep it active for now since the, the guard is going to attack me. This one will be flipped to its B side and then returned to my hand. All right, so from there, then the enemy's turn to activate now. So the enemies are going to activate in their order. So the green enemies are number one, so they're going to go first. So each of the green enemies, which there's only one, is going to move up to two spaces, which it doesn't need to move as it is already adjacent to me. And then it's going to go ahead and attack and do two damage to me, plus it's going to roll its modifier. And it's a minus, so it's going to be minus one to its attack. So it's only going to do one damage to me. Again, then this is going to move down. And I do have the one defense for that, so I don't take any damage. Next, the blue guard is going to go. And the blue one, again, is going to move two spaces, moving to the shortest path possible to get to me. It will not go over hazards to get to me either. And then it will not be able to perform an attack because it's it's a melee attack, so it will not be able to do that. And so the enemy's turns are done. So at this point, then you'll move into the end of the round where you're going to handle any other effects if there are any. And then you're going to start a new round. So again, it's over to me again. And I'm going to choose two cards. Now I can also choose to discard this at any time, getting it back to my hand on the B side. So if I needed, if I or I wanted to have that back, I could do so at this point. And well, actually, this one only lasts one turn, so it is going to come back to me at this point. And so I'm going to get that back. And what do I want to do? So I think I will play this one for its bottom effect this time. And with that one, I'm going to go ahead and play the Warding Strength. All right. And then I'm going to choose, so it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go with the 32. If he roll, if they roll the minus, it, they're going to go first anyway, so it's not going to matter too much on that. All right, so then the guards are going to roll, and it's neutral, so the guards are going to be at 50. So I'm going to get to activate first, and I'm going to choose what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the bottom action for this one, and that's going to give me one shield and I'm just going to go ahead and leave that there and this one I can keep there any number of turns but once I choose to, then I'm done with it then I'll discard it and then this one is an attack that's three damage and it lets me push my target up to two spaces so I'm going to go ahead and roll and I did attack so that has to be moved down and it's a neutral so it doesn't add any bonuses so it's going to do three damage minus the one it's defense from the guard is going to drop it down to three. And then I do get to push the guard. So I am going to push him into the hazard there. And so that's going to cost that guard another point of health. All right. And then with that, I do also have the strength on self. So I'm going to gain that. I think that's an end or so I, I would have to have chosen that first. So I'm gonna I'm gonna not obviously choose that because I wanted to perform that attack action. All right, so then this one will be flipped over and added back to my hand as a B card. And then the then the bandits are going to activate. So I have the green bandit is going to move up again as it only has a movement of one this time, and then it is going to attack. And it got a plus. So it's going to do a whopping four damage. And I have minus one to that, so I'm going to take three damage for that one. Ouch. Oop, this side. So I'm at nine. Okay. And then the blue is going to move up one, and again, it, it won't be able to attack. So then this is going to move down. Mine also moves down because I did attack. 
and that is the end of the round. And I am going to leave the defense there, I think, for this, for this round. And so again, it's going to go back to me to choose what I want to do. Um, he's got two health left, so I'm getting close. So I think I'm going to try to take him out with a big hit, but I'm going to play this one for the healing as well. So that is going to be my turn. I'm going to go ahead and choose the 18 because I'd like to go first because if I can get him... If I can eliminate him, then he won't be able to attack me. So then the guards are going to roll for theirs. It's a minus, so it's a good thing I chose the 18, because they're, and, but they do get that extra defense this round, so that's not too good either. All right, so I'm going to resolve the healing first, so that's going to bump me up. And i got to flip back over, so I'm going to be back to 11. And this is going to be discarded now, because it's on the B side. From there, then I'm going to go ahead and perform an attack at four and then i got a roll and it's a minus oh no so i missed the attack completely it, it completely cancels it out and that is also a b so that that is terrible news on my part so that did not work at all to plan all right so then the other the guards are going to go so first off green is going to attack me Oop. and it's a plus so it is adding one to that attack, so it's doing two damage, minus the one for my defense, so I'm down to 10. And then the other guard is gonna move two spaces. So he's right there on me, but I'm he's not going to be able to attack me just yet. All right, and that's gonna move down again. Mine moves down as well, and that is the round. So again, it's gonna go back to me. Now, I only have one card, so I basically have to choose to rest this round. So I am going to go ahead and discard this at this point. So it's going to go into the discard pile. And then I have to choose where how I want to rest. If I want to do a full rest or if I want to do a short rest. Now a short rest give, doesn't let me heal. And uh, it just randomly chooses one of the cards that I'm going to be discarding. Where if I take a long rest, it is going to take up my entire turn. But I do get to choose the card I'm discarding. And I, still, and I do get to heal a little bit. And with both of them on me, I think that's the better choice at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and take the long rest. And so that is going to be the last, basically, 99 for initiative. All right. And the guards are bumped up, too. They, they're definitely taking advantage of that opportunity. So they're at 70. And so they're still going to activate first. So the guard is going to carry out an attack of two. And it's a minus. And that's going to move down then. So it's going to be one damage on me. So I'm going to take the one damage. So I'm back over on this side at nine. And then the blue guard is a plus. So it's multiplying it. So it's going to do four damage to me. Ouch. So eight, seven, six, five. Oof. They're, they've been getting lucky with those rolls. Man. Okay. So now it is my turn to go. So I will get to gain my cards back. So uh, all my cards will be flipped back over to their A side, and I have to choose one of them that I want to discard, which shield bash. Self heal. Ooh, that's a tough choice. Um, I am going to go ahead and do I'm going to go ahead and do the shield bash. I'm going to go ahead and drop that one just because uh, I think these will help me out. All right. And then I do get to heal and try to remember what the healing was. Let me double check that real quick. I get to heal two, so I'm going to be back up to seven at least. All right, so then again, it is going to start a new round. So I have to choose my cards. And let's see, still got two health. And I'm here. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the... do 
that one. And I think I need some defense. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose those. And I'm gonna go with the 27 so that I know I'm gonna go first. Then the enemies are gonna go, or they're gonna determine their initiative. So they're in the middle at 50. All right. So again, it's gonna go into my turn. And I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the attack. So this lets me do an attack of three. I'm gonna roll my die. And it's a zero, so no modifications. It is going to soak one, but that will be enough to eliminate the green guard or green uh, bandits. So the green bandit has been eliminated. And then it goes to my other action. I'm going to go ahead and gain the two defense to try to uh, defend that a little bit as my health was getting a little low. And I still have all of that guard to chew through. All right, so then this moves down. And... The guards are going to go, so green has been eliminated. So now it is over to blue. Blue is going to move up one and attack me for two damage. And then it's going to roll, and I got a plus, so it's going to add plus one to that. So I'm going to take one damage, as it would have done three, but I do get two defense on that. All right, so that is the end of that turn. So again, it is going to go back to me. And... Ah... Uh, I do have that really nice modifier in there. So I could go, I could go for broke here and really try to hammer that guy. So. Otherwise, I could do cleave. Tough choice here. So I think I think I'm going to go for broke. I'm going to go ahead and do the big attack there, and then the leaping jump, and then I'll go with the 54. So the only way this is going to work is if the guard rolls high. He does not. He's going to stay at 50. So he is going to attack me first, and so he's going to do two damage. I am going to. Whoop! I do. He does get to roll. So let me handle that real quick. It's a plus, so he's again going to do plus. I don't, I don't think I moved it, so it is up here. It's still going to add plus one, so I'm going to take another damage, and then it does move down. All right, so that is his turn, so now it goes to my turn. So I am going to do the big attack here. It's a plus. Oh, that was key. So it's multiplied by two. That's 12 damage minus the one defense is 11, and that will eliminate him. That was huge. I was really hoping that was going to work out. Because after that, after that's resolved, then this card is automatically lost. So I would have lost that, and so the next turn, I would have had to have discarded that to gain that back on as the B-side. And I would have basically had one more shot at things to, and then I would have been able to, at least I would have had a four-point attack. But if that wouldn't have been able enough, been enough to finish him off which at the very least I would have done five minus, so I would have done four. Ah, I would have really needed another modifier to that in order to, to pull that off, depending upon how it rolled. All right, so I was able to eliminate those, those enemies. So then I'm gonna flip this back over and read through this now. So with this, it says, well, your gear certainly isn't shiny anymore, and it wasn't even particularly fancy to begin with. Come to think of it, got a job, got the job done, at least, but your situation is quite dire. You'll need to survive long enough to find out how to restore yourself to original size. But for now, you'll need to deal with the verming that just appeared. Read Collector. All right, so then the Collector comes up. And I'm not going to, to read it all through this because I don't want to spoil too much for you. But basically with this, after you resolve it, it'll let you go on to the next scenario. And it says that you can now equip items during scenario setup. And so each one of these cards does provide different items that you can equip. And each one of them, each card gives you one option roughly to choose from. And there are requirements to that that I'll cover in another video if I end up making any more of these. So from there, then you would proceed to scenario two, which is the crossing road, crossing the road. 
Well, I was able to successfully complete my first mission and on my journey to solving my smallness and hopefully returning to my regular size. I hope you found the video entertaining and helpful in learning a little bit more about Gloomhaven buttons and bugs and whether this is one you want to add to your collection. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. And let me know if you'd like to see anything else around this video, whether it's a full teaching video or other playthrough videos covering more of the campaign scenarios and missions. I always love starting conversation and hearing from you in the comments down below. Let me know also if I did anything wrong. I always do my best to try to get the rules as accurately as possible, but I do make mistakes from time to time, and I love learning and, and, and hearing what others have done, or if you saw other strategies that I could have employed that would have been a little bit more successful, let me know in the comments down below as well. I love starting a conversation with you, and until next time, I'll see you later.